Welcome back and hello if you are new. Now, I'm kicking off something which I think, um, well, I've been thinking of doing for quite a long time. Uh, there's a couple of people that I've been having conversations with on Instagram and, you know, various people who watch the channel and I'm so grateful for your feedback. Um, and a lot of people said that I should do kind of like a monthly roundup. So this is going to be not only dedicated to some of the stuff that I didn't necessarily cover in depth in an album review, but it's also going to be almost like shout outs to bands that I would love to cover, but I just simply don't have the time. So I think it's a good way of, you know, being able to kind of raise awareness of these amazing, amazing bands, but maybe not go into as much detail as I do in my reviews. And particularly because I always feel that I miss out on some of the really, really fantastic underground bands. And I'd love to kind of share that with you guys. So first up, I'm going to be talking about Envy and their brand new album, The Fallen Crimson. So I've never really sort of known about Envy. This is my introduction to the band. I know that they've been away for quite a long time, so obviously The Fallen Crimson was very much hotly anticipated, and it's become a record that I've not been able to put down. In terms of sound, they kind of sound a little bit like if Dillinger met The Ocean and Touche Amore, kind of all three of those bands, but all in Japanese. And I think it's a really interesting um, kind of sound that the band put together and particularly those kind of glistening post-rock sections and it's also very cinematic uh, with some female vocals thrown in there as well and definitely worth your time. Second on this list is Giver with Sculpture of Violence out via Holy Roar. The band hail from Germany and this release would definitely appeal to more posy hardcore kind of fans. And at first listen, I kind of thought that they sounded similar to With Honor, Shy Halud, and then even a little bit of Comeback Kid. But I think there's so many different um, ideas that are being put forward on Giver's album, and it definitely is a grower. <laughs> it's definitely kind of become one of my favorite sort of posy hardcore albums and it's really kicked the year off in, in fantastic fashion. The album also deals with themes which are based around the idea of can there ever be peace, you know, exploitative labour, things which are really quite current um, and very important to talk about. But most importantly what I love about Giver I think is the sense of energy that they've got, you know, they've got those quintessential tick boxes which is, you know, gang vocals, those kind of two-step beats, but they've also got some blast beat sections, but it's always full of energy and it never really stops moving, which is what I love the most about them. Now, for long-time viewers of the channel, you'll know, no doubt, that I'm an absolutely huge Isan fan, and I was... I still can't believe I got to interview him for the Armor uh, album cycle. But this is his latest EP, titled Telemark, and there's three original tracks and two covers on there. One of which is Lenny Kravitz's Rock and Roll Is Dead, and the second, Iron Maiden's Wrathchild. Now, most importantly, I think it's somewhat of a departure from Amr, um, stylistically, for Isan, and it kind of moves more towards almost like a hard rock um, aesthetic. And there's a little bit of a hint of kind of Arctis uh, material in there as well. There's also slightly more of a progressive feel, I find, with, you know, incorporation of saxophone, and I think that the guitar work is a little bit more technical. Uh, but it's definitely worth your time, and this is the first in a series of EPs, apparently, that he is dropping. And now I move to Godthrim with their brand new album, Reflections. This is uh, very much doom metal, you know, in its purest form. The production isn't kind of uh, as top notch as, as you would kind of want it, but the songwriting and the actual, you know, meat and potatoes in there makes up for it a lot. The band is essentially formed out of ex-members of Solstice and My Dying Bride, and as you can imagine, it's very forlorn, very melancholic, but also incredibly catchy. 
And there are some really cool um, Celtic tones that are put forward on this record, and I think that it really does kind of become a bit of an earworm because it started off for me as a, a little bit difficult due to the production, but then I kind of got really behind it, and it's not really left my music since, to be fair. <laughs> Now, Spanish love songs, Brave Faces Everyone. This is without a doubt the album that completely sidelined me of this month, um, and for quite a long time actually. In terms of sound, it's this very kind of contemplative, but also quite mature sounding. It sounds to me kind of like a combination of The Swellers meets Rise Against and Turnover and again a little bit of Touche Amore but it's such an emotional trip and I think it's very nostalgia inducing as well um, like Beachfront Property that's just fantastic like you, you I don't know what it is but it's maybe the cadences of the melodies but it just instantly makes me kind of like almost happily sad in a really weird way it's very hard to describe and it's without a doubt my favorite thing I think I've listened to this month Now, next up is Kvelatak with Split. So, this is their new album, their first album which features their brand new singer, and it is full to the brim of energy. Now, as much as I really did like Natasferd, I did think that there were some sections where it kind of went off a little bit, but I think that Split is very much, you know, quite focused. There are some interesting ideas that are kind of put forward on the album, and although it is quintessentially Kvelatak, it's also quite proggy in places and they've got cool guest appearances like Troy Sanders from Mastodon and Scott Kelly from Neurosis who kind of appear on the record. There are so many like fist pumping riffs and those massive massive solos which kind of are peppered throughout the record. The album is definitely a grower and the more you listen to it the better it gets and it's definitely one that you shouldn't sleep on for February. Now, I've heard a lot of things about Convent and their brand new album Puritan Masochism released via Napalm Records. This is a little bit earlier, I agree, it's in January that this was released, but this is a band that have definitely been on my radar. A lot of people have recommended them to me. They played in London literally like last week. It's an all-female band, which I think is really cool because they've got bellows that are like, you know, deeper than most dudes. <laughs> And some of these riffs are just absolutely killer. It's so cool to see four very strong-minded women who are actually fronting this band and, you know, getting to those heights. It's really awesome. Their sound is quite doom metal oriented with a lot of... There's a bit of funeral doom in there, I guess, as well. But it's a fantastically strong effort and definitely one that I've slept on for way too long. Something. Holding you and finally we come to Psychotic Waltz and the God-Shaped Void. Released via Inside Out, the record is, as you can imagine, very proggy, uh, but they've been away for a very long time. It seems to be that a lot of people who have kind of come back in this video. Uh, and basically it sounds very similar to Dream Theatre, that kind of level of progginess. It's quite well polished, nicely produced, and you can hear a lot of intricacies, there's a lot of interesting guitar work at play, but it's also very cinematic as well. And it's definitely one that I didn't realise was going to kind of um, earworm its way in as quickly as it did. And that concludes my first ever Things I've Missed Out in February. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed doing something a little bit different from the standard album reviews and interviews. Um, but if you did enjoy it, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I want to try and do different content this year and really kind of try and push the box out a little. All of these bands deserve your time. I'll leave links underneath me so you can check them out and potentially buy any records that you might want. And yeah, hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think. And I will see you next month for Things I Left Out of March. <laughs> Take care.